One thing that I thought I'd never use and never have used is an installation driver. Multiple heads that can change between offset, 90 degree, and just a standard straight head. Standard straight head. That does not seem like it would be the name of it. It's probably not. But after making this video and really trying out three installation drivers, I realized how useful they can really be. First, we have the Bosch. The Bosch comes with several attachments, including a keyless chuck, an offset attachment, and a 90 degree attachment. Or just put the locking collet on the front for a screwdriver type effect. The Bosch has a brushless motor, a two speed gearbox, and 20 clutch settings. Battery readouts on the tool. The attachments for the Bosch click on by inserting the attachments and turning. They remove by reversing the action. The Milwaukee comes with three attachments, a locking collet, a keyless chuck that's metal, and ratcheting, and a 90 degree attachment. The Milwaukee also has an offset attachment. The Milwaukee is M12 fuel brushless, has a two speed gearbox. The forward and reverse selectors are electronic, and there's a 16 position clutch. Milwaukee attachments are removed by pulling on this ring and sliding out. The HyperTuff is a low cost option that doesn't have all of the attachments the others do. The HyperTuff has a rubber boot that fits over the front of it to make it a straight attachment. The collet is not locking. The HyperTuff has a keyless chuck. The HyperTuff, while it does have a 90 degree attachment as shown, it does not have an offset attachment. The HyperTuff is similar to Milwaukee in that you pull on the ring and slide the piece out to take the attachments off. The HyperTuff has 19 clutch settings. It has a two speed gearbox. And all three of these drivers have battery indicators on the tool in average at best lighting. Let's dive into each one of these installation drivers and check the RPM and torque of each one. We'll start with the Bosch. This apparatus has a sensor on it that'll tell us the RPM of the Bosch in low, high, and at its minimum working speed. That's important because if you're working with delicate fasteners, you might need to go slow. RPM and low gear. Lowest working RPM. The Bosch trigger response is just fantastic. Now this apparatus will help me measure torque on these drills. Basically, I cinch down that top wooden section on the middle wheel and eventually it gets so tight the drill cuts out. But what we're going to pay attention to is how much torque the drill builds up and at what RPM it cuts out so we can learn more about these tools. We're going to start with high speed. So the drill cut out at 565 RPM and built up 3.1 foot pounds of torque. I did this test a total of five times and the average foot pound torque was 3.4 and the average cut out RPM was 540. So let's move along now and go to low speed for the Bosch. The first run. Thirteen point nine. Good on the Bosch. The Bosch is a Brutus. Brutus beefcake. So I did this three more times with the Bosch on low speed, and we came out to an average of twelve point nine foot pounds per run, and the Bosch cut out at a one hundred and ninety one RPM on average. Man, fourteen point two. Bosch is a Brutus. Here is the hyper tough in low speed. And now high speed. And let's see our lowest operating RPM. Ooh. 
Now that we have our RPM numbers, let's move on to torque and let's start in high speed. The HyperTuff made 2.1 foot pounds and it cut out at 495 RPM. I did a total of five runs and the HyperTuff averaged 1.9 foot pounds of torque and it averaged a cutout RPM of 515 and was pretty consistent with that. Let's move on to low speed to see how much of a Brutus the HyperTuff is. Fourteen point one. You gotta be kidding me. So you heard that correctly. Fourteen point one, which was higher than the Bosch on three out of four of its runs, and it peaked the hyper tough that is at fifteen point two foot pounds in the third run, making an average foot pound of thirteen point seven, which is almost a full foot pound greater than the Bosch, and cutting out at one hundred and fifty one RPMs, which might have contributed to the higher torque because the brushless probably has more protection than the brushed motor. So it ran down a little bit lower, made a little bit more torque and maybe got a little warmer. You guys let me know what you think. Amazing. Way to go Walmart. Now let's move on to the Milwaukee M12 fuel installation driver, which I know will be a fan favorite. Let's start testing RPM and low speed. High speed. Lowest possible speed. Now let's move on to torque testing with the M12 in high speed. The Milwaukee produced 2.6 foot-pounds of torque and it cut out at 410 RPM. On average in high speed, the Milwaukee produced 2.8 foot-pounds of torque and cut out at 415 RPMs. It's fairly consistent. Let's see what this thing can do when you put it in low gear. The Milwaukee got 9.6 foot-pounds of torque on the first run, and it cut out at 131 RPM. For some reason, I ended up doing seven runs for the Milwaukee. I think I must have lost track of count, but it averaged 9.4 foot-pounds per run, and it cut out at 161 RPMs on average. Now, as we take a short break and recess to reflect on the test so far, just check out all the fine cases that these three drivers come with. Aren't they all fabulous? All three of them. Time for some fast paced action as we're going to drive in 10 of these screws with each drill side by side to see which one is the fastest. Three, two, one. <laughs> So the Bosch and the Milwaukee are neck and neck, really, and the HyperTuff comes up last. So even though it has more torque, that's in low speed, not high speed, where you're driving these screws. In driving small fasteners, RPM plays a huge role in how fast they go, not just torque. We're going to take the keyless chucks for each one of these drivers, put a spade bit in it, self-feed, 7 8 and try to drill through some Advantech flooring stacked up.
All of these drivers were in low speed. The Bosch, with a combination of good low-end torque and RPM, was able to win that test handily. Owning M12 and the HyperTough was late to the party. The HyperTough installed driver without attachments is right about seven and three quarter inches tall. The Bosch is about seven and a quarter inches tall. And the Milwaukee is about seven and a quarter inches tall. The Milwaukee is seven and a half inches long with the straight locking collet adapter. The Bosch is five and three quarter inches long with the straight adapter. The Hyper Tough is six inches long with its rubber boot making a straight adapter. The Hyper Tough has the only brushed motor as well. The Milwaukee weighs two pounds, 4.6 ounces with a straight adapter. The Bosch weighs one pound, 13.1 ounces. And the Hyper Tough weighs one pound, 15.7 ounces with its boot on. The different attachments will change the weight, but I wanted you guys to have a base reading of all three of them with the straight adapter on to compare. Also, every battery in this video is gonna be two amp hour to make them all uniform. Now we're gonna check the clutch for each one of these drivers. We're gonna start in the lowest setting and we're gonna drive some of those screws in, see how far they go and compare to three different drivers. As you can see, they didn't go very far. Now we're gonna to switch to a middle setting for each one of these, which is eight for the Milwaukee, 10 for the Hyper Tough and Bosch. It looks like on that middle setting, the Hyper Tough is a little bit more aggressive and allows the screw to be sunk all the way, whereas the Milwaukee and Bosch look pretty similar in where they ended up. Now we'll try the highest clutch setting below the drill mode. The Bosch and the Milwaukee were right at a perfect level there with the screw right at the wood level and the Hyper Tough looked like it would bury the screw and keep on going. I've put together a little rig right here so we can use the offset attachments and the 90 degree attachments for each one of these installation drivers. So let's go ahead and zoom in and we'll use the offset attachment so I can try to put this here wooden thing onto this other wooden thing. Here we go. Too far. Perfect. First up we have the Bosch. That was pretty good. Fit well. The Bosch is real smooth and the trigger is super smooth. Super duper smooth. Next up we have the Milwaukee, which is an Indian word which means it's more expensive than you thought. It's not true. Just trying to get it centered on this board. I had the clutch on, but it it did the job perfectly. Let's try one more without the clutch. I'll go right to the back. Like butter. You can see that we can get tucked in real tight up there. Now Johnny Walmart here doesn't have an offset attachment and for $35, you get way more than you ought to get. So we're gonna use the keyless chuck because it's a little bit narrower than the rest of the drill. See how high we can get up in there to get uh, a screw centered on this board. Now, just looking at the angle, you can see that we're gonna be at a steeper angle than the offset drills. And if it were a little bit longer screw or we had a little bit tougher location, we might end up splintering out the top of this board. It went okay this time, but uh, it won't work as well in all circumstances. But it does a pretty good job for being what it is. Okay, we have a four inch space right here to try to put in a 90 degree screw. The screws are one inches long, so we're gonna see if we can't fit each one of these in this space and screw the screw in. We have the Hyper Tough first. Now the Hyper Tough is just a little bit too big. Let's see if we can get back there. I think we can. We screw it in just a little bit. It's a little bit more difficult, but it worked out okay. I was in first gear. Let's try it again in second gear. Try to get one in there. See, that's it. See, we can, oh yeah. That was not too bad. It's got a decent size 90 degree attachment. The Bosch is actually much larger. Let's get the Bosch and see if she even fits here. I already know the answer. 
Now the Bosch looks a little bit chunkier than the rest of them. And when we put it up close, the tool itself almost doesn't fit. So we're not gonna be able to use the Bosch to screw in anything, not even at an angle, it's just too big. So here's the Bosch down below where my nails live. Just giving you an example of what it looks like. That was not the best example. It's actually very good. It does a good job, it's just a little chunky. Don't be offended. Now for everybody's favorite, Milwaukee. As you can see, Milwaukee has a lot of room. It's gonna be easy to do this one. Pretty easy with the Milwaukee and the head is the smallest of any of them. Now let's talk cost. At Walmart, you can buy the Hyper Tough install driver for $34.88 but I will remind you that that comes with the world's worst charger. So you need to purchase the fast charger, which is not fast, but much better. And you need to purchase another battery, the two amp hour or the four amp hour, because most of these hyper tough tools come with a 1.5 amp hour battery. And it's a little bit worse than a two and the four. So if you put together a kit like I've described, it would cost $75 plus whatever tax you have to pay locally. When it comes to the M12 installation driver, I purchased it on Amazon for $144.95. However, if you go to Home Depot or most locations, sell it for much more than that. This is the Honey plugin I used for Chrome, and it compares prices from across the web. And you can see the Amazon price is now $144.98, so it's slightly different but the Home Depot and Ace sell it for $199. You get a battery and charger with it, so you have the whole kit right from the get-go, and it'll be a sufficient kit for most jobs. As far as the Bosch, I got it for a great deal on Amazon at $149, which included the Bosch Chameleon and all of its attachments, two batteries and charger with a soft case and the oscillating tool that we're gonna use in an upcoming video. So it was a really great deal. Now, normally you would be paying almost $100 for the oscillating tool by itself, and it's on sale right now for under $80. And then the FlexiClick Bosch Chameleon multi-headed drill would be well over $100, even when it is on sale. Let's see how this breaks down as far as score. So we have features in size as the first category. I gave the first place to Milwaukee. It's good all around, has a metal chuck, a ratcheting chuck, has all the attachments. It's a little heavier, but I think overall it's the best as far as features and size. Second place to Bosch, it has a wonderful trigger. The attachments are a little large, but it's very lightweight. And then hyper tough and last, just because it lacks the attachments that the others have, although it's very light and very easy to use. The second category is RPM. What I did was I added the low RPM to the high RPM and subtracted our minimum working RPM. So the bigger it is, the more it penalized that particular drill. Bosch came out first with 1,968 total. HyperTuff was in last at 1,483, and Milwaukee was right in the middle at 1,713. The next category is torque. I added up the low end torque with the high end torque, very simple. Bosch came in first with 16.3, HyperTuff was in second, which is a shocker to me, at 15.6, and Milwaukee is in last, which is unbelievable to me, at 12.2. I only say that because Milwaukee is known for their powerful tools, and in this particular case, they weren't the most powerful, which is fine. It's just kind of shocking. The screw test is fairly straightforward. It's just the fastest of the bunch. The Milwaukee and the Bosch were tied and then the HyperTuff came in last, so I gave the Milwaukee and the Bosch a score of one, and the HyperTuff a three. The spade bit test first goes to the Bosch, second to Milwaukee, third to HyperTuff. I remarked that HyperTuff was really slow due to its lower RPM. As far as clutch performance, I gave ones to the Bosch and to Milwaukee, and I gave a three to the HyperTuff only because it was way too aggressive compared to everything else. As far as attachment performance, I gave one to Milwaukee. Great all-around performance and very good accessibility. The HyperTuff got three. It just lacks the attachments that the others have. 
And then for the Bosch, I gave it a two because that 90 degree attachment, especially, is just too large. We go down to price, it's a little bit murky. Here's what I did I put as close to a regular price as I could find. With the Hyper Tough at $75, it was because I wanted to add in the fast charger and another battery because I really wouldn't want to use the tool if I didn't have those two things. As far as the Bosch, I used the regular Amazon price, even though it showed it as lower than the normal price. They always say that. It's like my wife going to a store and everything's 20% off all the time. That's what it feels like as far as the Bosch. You can put your input in the comments if you think I'm a little off right here. The Bosch at 163 comes in second. And then the Milwaukee, I just took the Home Depot price. I think that most people go to Home Depot to buy these Milwaukee tools. And I believe that the Amazon price fluctuates quite a bit. So I don't think we can trust that low price that I purchased it for because I think it's going to change ever so often. It's already changed a little bit. That's why the Milwaukee gets the number three. So I totaled up the score for each one. The Bosch had 11. The HyperTuff had 21. And the Milwaukee had 14. I divided it by the number of categories to get the average finish. The Bosch came in first at 1.4. The Milwaukee was second at 1.75. And the HyperTuff was last at 2.6. Do you agree that the Bosch won this competition? I think the Bosch is a great installation driver, but I also think the Milwaukee is really, really good. And if you're just doing a few jobs where you think you might use something like this, the HyperTuff's a really, really good choice, especially if you're just gonna keep it around the house. It doesn't have the offset head, but it does have the 90 degree head, and it comes in handy in a lot of situations. It only puts you out a small amount of money, so you can't argue with that. Now, the Bosch and the Milwaukee are professional grade. They both have an excellent build quality. I think parts of the Milwaukee are superior to the Bosch, and parts of the Bosch are superior to the Milwaukee. So in that way, they're both at the tip top. Oh man, but that trigger, it is fantastic. If you enjoyed this video, please like the video. It helps us here on YouTube. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed and consider joining the channel as a member to help support and help fund some of these tool purchases. We may actually start giving back to our members a little bit because obviously I don't need 15 installation drivers, 12 sawzalls and 36 drills. Some of them I have to keep around for comparison, but some of them are past their prime. They're no longer needed here, so it might be given a few of those to our channel members. So consider that and consider joining up. I hope you all enjoyed the video. God bless each and every one of you.